So in the last uh, lecture, what we did is we looked at, we introduced this thing called the error function, which if you remember, the error function is defined as 2 over the square root of pi, the integral of 0 to x, e to the minus t squared dt. We also defined a complementary error function, which starts at x and is and goes to infinity, and which is the same integrand. And so in the end, what we found was that the sum of these two, the error function and the complementary error function, are equal to 1. So that, that spans the full range of integration um, for this function. Now, um, what I wanted to talk about now was what if we took the um, e to the minus t squared and expanded it in a Taylor series. So if we expanded it in a Taylor series, I would get 1 minus t squared plus t to the fourth 2 factorial plus dot 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 dot. So I could plug that in, that would make the integration a little easier. So my error function would be 2 over the square root of pi, the integral 0 to x, 1 minus t squared plus t to the fourth over 2 factorial minus dot 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 which you can then integrate over t. And when I do, what I get is 2 over the square root of pi x minus x cubed over 3 plus x to the fifth 5 times 2 factorial minus dot dot dot. And it keeps going on. So basically, um, I could write down the a series solution for the error function. I could write it out as a series, um, which is still an approximation, but you know it's a much simpler integral to solve. And you know, depending on the size of x, if x is much much less than one, then these x to some higher power would eventually um, become so small it would just become negligible. So then I could truncate the series. Um, so let's say, you know, I truncated up to the third one. I could say that my error function is approximately 2 over the square root of pi x minus x cubed over 3, let's say. You know, depending on what kind of precision that you're trying to get. Um, if you want more precision, you'd add in more terms. If you want less precision, precision then you would just pick up um, the number, you know, a fewer number of terms. Um, and so uh, so you could get an approximate answer for the error function by expanding it as a series. Um, so the last thing um, that we could write down for the, error, is, for the error function is that there is an imaginary version of it. So the imaginary error function <coughs> is written, uh, so it's often written as ERFI, and it's 2 over the square root of pi, 0 to x, e to the positive t squared um, dt. So the normal error function is just e to the minus um, t squared. And this one now is written as e to the t squared. So why is it called imaginary? Well, essentially, this error function, the imaginary error function, is i times the regular error function. So I just multiply by it. So that's what makes it imaginary. Um, is that now I've put um, a factor of i in front of the error function. Okay, so let's consider in, um, again, the complementary error function. 
which can be written as 1 minus the regular error function, <coughs> which is um, 2 over the square root of pi integrating from x to infinity e to the minus t squared dt. So that's the complementary error function. Um, now, let's see, I could write e to the minus t squared as 1 over t t e to the minus t squared. Now, t, um, t times e to the minus t squared, I could actually write as the derivative of minus one half e to the minus t squared. So if you were to work out that derivative, what you would get is minus one half um, minus two t Uh, times e to the minus t squared. So the minus one half and the minus two cancel, the t and the one over t cancel, and e to the minus uh, t squared. Okay, so I can write it then as this um, derivative. So let's put that into the integral. So again, I'm evaluating the complementary error function. Um, which uh, I would have, um, well, yeah, which I've already said is 2 over the square root of pi x infinity um, e to the minus t squared dt. So let's just take a look at the integral x to infinity e to the minus t squared dt, which I'm now writing as the integral x to infinity of 1 over t to the derivative of minus 1 half e to the minus t squared dt. So it looks like we're making it a little more complicated than it has to be. But if we do an integration by parts, um, then we could write this down as 1 over t minus 1 half e to the minus t squared um, evaluated from x to infinity minus the integral x to infinity minus one half e to the minus t squared minus one over t squared dt. <clears throat> um, which, when I evaluate it, I get e to the minus x squared over x minus one half this integral one over t squared um, e to the minus t squared dt. So now if I say one over t squared e to the minus t squared is equal to one over t cubed um, times the derivative of minus one half e to the minus t squared. So I'm taking the same derivative as a different factor up front, at front. And again, if I repeat the integration by parts, then what I should get is the integral of x to infinity, one over t squared e to the minus t squared dt is equal to, um, 1 over t cubed minus 1 half e to the minus t squared evaluated from x to infinity minus the integral x to infinity of minus 1 half e to the minus t squared mi uh, minus 3 over t to the fourth dt 
which gives me e to the minus x squared over 2x cubed minus 3 halves the integral x to infinity 1 over t to the fourth e to the minus t squared dt. And so you can kind of see um, that I can continue this on and on and on, and I would just keep getting an integral with 1 over t to a higher power. Um, <clears throat> so I can create more and more and more terms, and eventually what I would have is that the complementary error function is equal to 1 minus the regular error function, which is equal to, or approximately equal to, e to the minus x squared over x square root of pi times the series 1 minus 2x squared plus 3 times 1 over 2x squared quantity squared minus 5 times 3 times 1 over 2 to the x squared cubed plus dot dot dot. <clears throat> um, and uh, so for an absolute value of x much, much greater than 1, I can now truncate the series because I have so many terms that are 1 over x to a power um, in the series. And I come up with a general equation for the complementary error function, which is e to the minus x squared over x square root of pi, the sum of terms from 0 to infinity of minus 1 i. Um, well, let's change that. Let's change it to n so we don't confuse it. n minus 1 to the n power i double factorial divided by 2 to the x squared squared, where double factorial is a factorial of odd numbers. So basically, uh, 1, 3, 5, dot, 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 all the way to n, where n is an odd number. So that's what I would get, that's what I get up here, is I get this 5 times 3 times 1 um, uh, factor. <coughs> um, now, since uh, the numerator continues to grow, the series diverges eventually. Um, because you got in um, this n, uh, n double factorial um, that we have to worry about. So, so you can get, you know, so the series doesn't necessarily, um, oh, let me fix that. That's not i. That's an n. Um, anyway, so, so you would get, so the n, the double factorial will keep getting bigger, you know, it basically keeps getting a product of bigger and bigger numbers, but the um, denominator is um, basically x to the fourth, um, or not x to the fourth, that's x to the n. Sorry, i got to fix this. So 2x squared to the n power. So you have this x squared to the power n, but you also have an n double factorial in the numerator. Um, so eventually, you know, actually the series is um, does uh, diverge. By the next lecture, we'll take a look at it um, in some more detail.